Okay, so last time we looked at unit and flatten. And the units took a functor and applied it no times to a contract C to get a new contract. And then applied that contract to X. So maybe no times applied to C is just C itself. And then we applied C to X. And then returned something that was maybe once applied to C. Well, maybe C is something that's either none or some thing that passed C. And since we know X passed the C contract here, we can wrap it up in a sum and know that it will pass the maybe C contract here. Similarly, the array of unit, this is just C of X, like before. And this is clearly an array of C's, right there. The flattening, instead of going no times to once, it goes from twice to once. So this is an array of arrays of C. And then that's what this should be. If it is, then we concatenate all of the interior arrays into a single large one. And so we have a single array of C as the result. With maybe's flattening, we get something that is maybe, maybe x. That's twice maybe here. So maybe, maybe int is either none, some none, or some, some int. So we come in here and we say if it's a sum, well, then we know sum appears twice. So we can strip off one of them there. And if it's a none, which is the only other option, we just say none becomes none again. And so here, anything that had two sums had, is a single sum. And anything that had a none in it becomes none. So it's maybe applied once. And then we set up some nice uh, methods that are more in the JavaScript style on how to flatten these two things. Now it turns out that if you have map, flatten, and unit, that's all you need for a monad. Now monads have a bad reputation as being hard to understand. Um, this is possibly because most of the functionality that the example monads people usually use, like maybe and flat and array of, um, are already built into most languages. I mean, maybe I explained that you can use it instead of exceptions, but you know, exceptions work great and there's syntax for it. Um, flatten is in every uh, JavaScript library because it's such an egregious uh, missing function. Everybody wants to use flatten, so it should be built in, even though it isn't. Um, we have other monads for things like mutable state. Well, JavaScript has mutable state for things like I.O. JavaScript has plenty of I.O. Uh, has the entire DOM interface, let alone um, fetching things. Um, you can use monads for asynchronous operations. Well, at least with the XHR, we've got async operations. And set timeout, even without the network. Um, the thing is, um, it's true that these languages have all of those features, but if you leave out the features, if you don't use them, then your programs become much easier to debug because you don't have to worry about some bit of mutable state that changes before you run your test. So sometimes the state is one way and your test passes, sometimes your state is another way and it doesn't. If you don't have asynchronous operations, well, 
you don't have race conditions, if you don't have um, exceptions, then you don't have to think about uh, what kind of information might leak by being thrown. You know, if, um, if there's some secret in the code and the, ex the trace that comes out of the exception contains that secret, that's bad news. You have to think about that if you're doing security work. Um, so um, the simpler the language is, the easier it is to test. What monads do is let you have your simple language, but add all these features back in again, and write your own. Most languages that have good support for monads also have really uh, concise syntax for dealing with them. And so you don't lose any of the convenience that you get from having the syntax, uh, from having the features built in with their own special syntax. You can actually add your own features to the language and then exploit the built-in monad syntax. So people who like monads like it because it makes writing libraries easy. You want to have parsers in your language? Great, you write a parser monad and then you have this nice fancy syntax for dealing with your parsers or for your um, exceptions or for uh, mutable state or for IO or for anything else that you can think of with a monadic interface. And there are lots and lots of things with monadic interfaces. So the big deal about monads is mostly first understanding why in the world anyone would want to use one since you've got all the features to begin with. Well the answer is you use them because you don't have quite all the features you want. You have a bunch of common ones but then that when you start writing other ones they have horrible syntax that you have to use. So if you've got a nice supporting syntax for your monads in your language then things become easier. So I'm going to start writing a monad here in JavaScript. Now map is built in to arrays but not into maybe. And so to make this convenience method work more like you'd expect it to in the JavaScript idiom, we say give me a contract, I will apply maybe that contract to the current maybe object. So if this is none, it will clearly pass maybe C. If this is some X where X passes C, then some X passes maybe C. Um, a monad. Well, here's the constructor function. Very simple. All monads support flat map, which is just composed of mapping and then flatten it. So if you can map a contract or a guarded function over an array, this will do it. Uh, you can also map a function over a maybe. And then afterwards we flatten it. Those are two very simple operations, mapping and flattening. Now we want array and maybe to be examples of monads. Um, JavaScript supports this, well, most versions of JavaScript. I don't think Internet Explorer does. But most versions of JavaScript that you'll find in browsers supports this magic incantation that says, make array into a monad. Um, it says, change the inheritance chain so that array prototype, which was created built into the browser before I ever came along, now inherits from monads prototype. And we'll do the same thing to maybe. So now all arrays are going to have this flat map method on them because arrays now inherit from monad. So what does that mean we can do with it? Given a bunch of arrays, say we want to compute for each possible choice of x, and for each choice of y, and for each choice of z, compute x times y plus z. So this says, effectively, for each possible choice of x in x's, and for each possible choice of y in y's, 
and for each possible choice of z and z's, return x times y plus z. If we run this, get, ta-da, well, 1 times 4 plus 5 is 9. 1 times 5 plus 5 is 10. 1 times 6 plus 5 is 11. Then we go up by 2s, 13, 15, 17, and then we go up by 3s, 17, 20, 23. So this is a nice, easy pattern. We do flat maps all the way down until we get to the last one, and then we do map. Now the reason we do that, instead of having this, is that then we would have to say array.unit, this thing. So we wrap it up in brackets, and then we immediately flatten out those brackets. So since we already support map, we can ignore the unit for the most part and do this. Now let's see how flat map works for um, maybes. And here we'll have x is equals sum 4, y is equals sum 5, z is equals sum 5. So this should give us 4 times 5 is 20, plus 5 is 25. We run it, we get sum 25. Great. If one of these happened to be none, however, run it, and the result is none. So the same logic that we've written here works whether we are using exceptions, or arrays, or if instead of having sum four, it was a promise for the result of some asynchronous operation, then we would implement flat map to say wait until this promise resolves, until the result comes back, and then apply this to the result that we got right there. So we can use this same syntax for any monad that we want. In Scala, we see what that uh, this syntax is a lot nicer. There you'd say for x from x's y from y's, z from z's, yield x times y plus z. So a lot shorter, a lot sweeter. But this is as good as we can get in JavaScript.